here we are looking at 1052 AD. And that date, there's some questions around that date. This is when we had a very powerful sequence of planetary resonances, as you can see here. Started with a new moon, then a Venus-Mercury conjunction, then a mercury Kazemi followed by a Mercury Mars conjunction. You see Mercury moving ahead there. Then there was Mercury conjunction Jupiter. Then we had the moon move into opposition. So that's a two week period with all those things happening. That is crazy. You can look at the date there on the bottom going from April 20th to June 15th. Okay. This is taken with Solarium. I'll explain why this date may not be accurate, but it's roughly accurate to 1052 AD. Then after that full moon, basically during and after that full moon, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter all go Kazemi simultaneously. And immediately as that's occurring, basically right afterwards, check this out right here. There's that Kazemi. Boom. They hit the Crab Nebula. See that thing that says uh, marker one? I have the arrow pointing to it. That is the Crab Nebula. That had a supernova eruption in 1054. And the date for that, according to eyewitness accounts and records, was June 19th to the 28th of 1054 CE. And they said it was outrageous because it appeared in the dawn and in the evening. It was that bright, close to the sun. And it was so bright that even though on one side it was kind of under the beams of the sun, it still appeared. Crazy bright. 6,500 light years away, plus or minus 1,600. You will notice Betelgeuse there just off to the side of it. That's only 408 light years away, though the range is 408 to 548 light years away. And let me turn myself back on. There's Betelgeuse. So Betelgeuse is actually fairly close to the Earth and our solar system in the grand scheme for the Crab Nebula like that. But it had a supernova eruption that was right after, we think, or at least I think, this planetary resonance sequence. Think of how this is going to create a gravity wave spiking out, okay? Because all of these are gravity players. And the planets effectively act as a way for the sun to extend its gravitational field out further and make it still significant. Because you have to keep in mind gravity decreases with the inverse square law. So every time you double the distance, it goes down by four. But if, you, if you're able to fling Jupiter out exactly along that line and the other planets, well, you can extend that gravity vector out and make it more significant. And you'll see how they come together, all of them, right as they hit the Crab Nebula. And then it goes supernova. Now, this planetary resonance sequence here is for 1052, but that very well could actually be around 1054 because the rate of precession could be different than what it is now. If it's a slightly different, and there's a lot of evidence that precession has a variable rate, perhaps the sun in the solar system is traveling along an ecliptic orbit, so it's going to have a variable rate of velocity around that common center, then this could line up for 1054 AD. In 1052, there's a recorded Mayaki event, which is a massive increase in radioisotopes, specifically carbon-14. Tree rings record a 4.9% increase in carbon-14 in 1052. We have the Crab Nebula going supernova in 1054. We have multiple eyewitness accounts for that. So that date is probably the most accurate date of the bunch. This date for this planetary resonance sequence could very well be 1054 if our rate of precession is just slightly different. Because remember, our background sky could be in a different position. So it's very likely that this is actually 1054, not 1052. Then we also have this Mayaki event dated 1052. Well, they're counting tree rings. That's well within, I would think, the air of uh, the precise dating. And so... The Crab Nebula supernova, that impact very likely actually probably triggered that Mayanki event. They're probably one of the same. Mayanki events aren't just solar. We don't know exactly what they're caused from. These massive influx of particles could either be solar or cosmic in origin. So we have a supernova eruption within two years of a Mayanki event. That's probably one of the same thing. And we just need to get our timelines a little bit more precise. But look at this planetary resonance sequence. So we have this go through here. The video ends on the 15th of June, okay? So watch this. It goes like this. And then it ends right there. 
watch how the Crab Nebula, right, continues to travel down because it's fixed in position. Eyewitness account said it was as bright as Jupiter, okay? So here is uh, Jupiter. That's Venus, actually. There is Jupiter right there, okay? Jupiter is one of the brightest objects in the sky. So then right after this video ends, imagine that all of a sudden brightening to the apparent magnitude of Jupiter and being visible during the dawn and the dusk. And what happened around this time frame is you actually had the medieval warm period. So there's evidence that these nova explosions, they bring in energy to the planet. And it's not distributed uniformly. If it depends, depending on how it hits, it can just, for example, cause selective heating to like the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. The cosmos can have a tremendous effect on us. You can have a star go supernova and then that can actually trigger climate shifts on the planet and geophysical changes. Tree rings can record that data. I would put like a lot of money on this Mayaki event actually being from this supernova eruption and these planetary resonances all occurring at the same time. Because anyone that knows how to read uh, an astrological chart knows that this is insane. In one lunar cycle, new moon to new moon, in 30 days, we have all these conjunctions. And this is the order here. So Mercury conjuncts Venus, then it goes Cassini with the Sun, then it conjuncts Mars, then it conjuncts Jupiter, then we have the full moon as Venus, Mars, and Jupiter all meet up together, go Cassini, they conjunct the Sun, creating that perfect gravitational vector, the Earth right here as well. The moon behind the Earth even, conjunct the Crab Nebula, then Mars conjuncts Jupiter, we get a new moon, and right after that, boom, we get that supernova eruption. That is insane.